In this video lesson, I am going to teach you about the important concept in P-block element, namely the manufacture of ammonia by Heber's process. In fact, this is a very important method of obtaining ammonia and it is a commercial method also to obtain ammonia. This is very popularly called Heber's process and also by the name as Heber's Bosch process. It's a cohort done by two different scientists, Heber and Bosch. So therefore it can also be called by the name as Heber's Bosch process. Now to understand about the manufacturing of ammonia by Heber's process, let us look at Lee Chatelier's principle. There are certain set of conditions that we follow so that we get good quality yield and good quantity yield of ammonia. Now what are those conditions? Who has set these conditions? And how is this applied here? Let us have a look at it. Scientists by name Lee Chatelier has worked out the concept of chemical equilibrium and then he has given a wonderful principle which we refer it by the name as Lee Chatelier's principle. It states that if a constraint is added to a system in equilibrium, the equilibrium shifts in such a way so as to nullify the effect of the added constraint. Now, let us take up that application and let us see how Lee Chatelier's principle can be used to obtain ammonia and commercial scale of obtaining ammonia is very important because we have a lot more uses out of this ammonia which will be the raw material which is used for especially obtaining many fertilizers, ammonia fertilizers. Now the reaction goes like this. One mole of ammonia combines with three mole of hydrogen forming two moles of ammonia. Now delta H is equal to minus 92.2 kilojoules means the reaction involves liberation of heat. It's an exothermic process. And standard enthalpy of formation which is written as delta H naught F is equal to minus 46.1 kilojoule for one mole. Whenever we talk about standard enthalpy of formation, the consideration is always for one mole. One mole means Avogadro number of molecules. That is 6.022 if you take the part 23 molecules of ammonia. This much of heat is liberated during its formation from nitrogen and hydrogen. Now let us take a deeper look at Lee Chatelier's principle. As per Lee Chatelier's principle for the system which is in equilibrium condition, that is while producing ammonia or manufacturing ammonia, we need to maintain a moderate temperature or a lower temperature of around 500 degrees Celsius or it can be 700 Kelvin or 773 Kelvin to be more appropriate. And we require the usage of very high pressure, high pressure of about 200 atmospheres and this reaction requires the usage of the catalyst in the form of iron oxide which can be taken in finely divided form. Now here is an important point to be remembered. Whenever a catalyst is taken in finely divided form or pulverized or powdered form, it creates more surface area for the attachment of the constituent reacting particles because we would have increased the active centers in the finely divided state. Then we use alumina and potassium oxide as promoters. Promoters are those chemical substances which enhances the activity of the catalyst which accelerates the activity of the catalyst. So the promoter used here is alumina, Al2O3 and potassium oxide, K2O. Then last but not the least, once we obtain ammonia, it has to be removed from the reacting mixture. What will happen when we do like this? Now 
in order to produce more ammonia this is the most useful method that we can employ the moment we remove ammonia from the mixture equilibrium gets disturbed and it goes on with more and more production of ammonia means the equilibrium will shift to right next the important point to be noted here is that the ammonia that is obtained will be in the liquid form so ammonia we obtain will be liquid ammonia not gaseous ammonia now next let us have a look at the flow chart which explains how the hebbers process is being carried out a important point to be remembered in this is that there is no wastage of the constituents anywhere in the manufacturing because the setup is done in such a way that we will not waste any of the constituents now let us go on with the understanding of the flow chart there are inlets that are being provided through which we pass hydrogen gas and nitrogen gas in the ratio 1 is to 3 if one mole of nitrogen is been passed or say for example one cylinder of nitrogen gas we have taken we have to allow three cylinders of hydrogen to be passed so we need to maintain that ratio as 1 is to 3 now they both are being allowed into a compressor the next job after we get this mixture of gases nitrogen and hydrogen which comes separately they need to be compressed so that we create a high pressure of 200 atmospheres so what is the first thing that we need to do once we allow the gas to gases we need to compress it that means we need to increase the pressure in order to increase the pressure we are passing it through compressor so we need to note the pressure the pressure should be reaching 200 atmospheres which is a very high pressure now after we achieve this then this mixture of gases are allowed into catalyst chamber the arrow is the indication of the direction of the flow of the constituents okay now we are allowing this mixture of nitrogen and hydrogen gas into the catalyst chamber where in inside the catalyst chamber we have kept iron oxide as our catalyst and to enhance the activity of the catalyst we have taken it in its finely divided form as well as the promoters alumina l2o3 and potassium oxide k2o and what happens here is that the separately coming nitrogen and hydrogen gases which would not have reacted in the compressor chamber will undergo reaction here so in the catalyst chamber the reaction proceeds another important point to be remembered here is that the catalyst chamber should be maintained at a temperature of 500 degrees celsius or 700 kelvin or more approximately uh, more exactly 773 kelvin temperature initially only we need to maintain this temperature later on what happens is that because the reaction is exothermic which reaction the production of nitrogen combining with hydrogen forming ammonia is an exothermic process that means heat is liberated so this reaction heat itself is sufficient enough for us to carry out the rest of the process of the reaction so we need to take care to see to it that initially we maintain in the catalyst chamber the prescribed temperature of somewhere around 700 kelvin now here ammonia is obtained in the gaseous form thus obtained ammonia is passed through water cooled condenser whenever we write diagram in chemistry like this we are thorough tubes it means the condensers it is been uh, cooled with water by passing cold water so surrounding we are maintaining a coolness of the temperature what happens now is that the gaseous ammonia gets converted into liquid ammonia another important point to be registered at this point of time is that not all the gaseous ammonia that is produced in the catalyst chamber will be getting converted into liquid ammonia it is only 15% of the gaseous ammonia will be getting converted into liquid ammonia the remaining 
higher percentage of ammonia will remain in the gaseous state. Now what will happen to that ammonia? That will raise up from this column and it will come back into the pump and through the pump it is again recycled so that it goes through the water cooling pipes again so in the next time when it passes through it will get condensed into liquid ammonia now once we obtain liquid ammonia if we go on with the removal of this then as I already said to you the as per the Lee Chatelier's principle the yield of ammonia will be to a greater percentage so this is how we obtain ammonia as per Heber's process otherwise also called Heber's Bosch process of manufacturing of ammonia. So in my next video lesson I would be covering with little more detail about the physical and chemical properties of ammonia. Please have a look at those videos and learn more.